after the lesion localization the video will be incomplete if we don't discuss the clinical features of the fourth nerve palsy trochlear nerve palsy results basically from the paralysis of the superior oblique muscle and the most prominent finding here is hypertropia of the affected eye in primary position this is because of loss of depression in adduction okay which is the secondary action of the superior oblique muscle because one eye is higher than the other patients are going to experience vertical diplopia where images appear one above the other moreover this diplopia is worse in down gaze that is whenever the patient is reading or descending down stairs also it's better in the up gaze when the superior oblique is not acting loss of intorsion also occurs since we know that intorsion is the primary action of superior oblique so loss of intorsion leads to ex cyclotorsion of the affected eye resulting in torsional diplopia wherein the image appears tilted okay so on ocular motility testing there is limitation of depression in adduction and also there is limitation of intorsion leading to an ex cyclotorsion i patients with fourth nerve palsy adopt a characteristic compensatory head posture to minimize the discomfort caused by the vertical and torsional diplopia classically this posture includes a head tilt towards the opposite side that is a normal side face turned towards the normal side and the chin down posture let us now understand why this happens the fundamental problem in fourth nerve palsy is a weakness of the superior oblique muscle by adopting an abnormal head posture the patient is essentially trying to avoid all the positions in which the superior oblique is maximally required this means that avoiding depression avoiding adduction and avoiding intorsion the compensatory head posture places the eye in a position where the superior oblique is least active thereby reducing the diplopia let us first look at the head tilt when the head is tilted towards the affected side the vestibulocular reflex demands an intorsion of that eye there are two intorters of the eye the superior oblique and the superior rectus in the fourth nerve palsy the superior oblique is weak so intorsion cannot be adequately produced by it as a result the superior rectus overacts to compensate now remember the superior rectus does not only intort it also elevates the eye so this overaction of the superior rectus leads to worsening of hypertropia when the head is tilted towards the affected side this forms the basis of the beljowski head tilt phenomena which states that in a patient with hypertropia tilting the head towards the affected side increases the vertical deviation therefore to avoid this worsening the patient tilts the head towards the opposite or the normal uh, normal side when the head is tilted towards the normal side the affected eye now requires extorsion and the extorters are inferior oblique and the inferior rectus now both of these muscles are normal and they balance each other without producing a significant vertical deviation the superior oblique is not required in this position hence the head tilt towards the opposite side or the normal side reduces diplopia The next component of the abnormal head posture is the face turn which is again towards the normal side. When the face is turned to one side, the eyes move in the opposite direction. So face turned towards right, eyes move towards the left and face turned to the left, eyes move to the right. When the patient turns the face towards the normal side, the affected eye moves into abduction. This is important because the superior oblique is most effective in adduction. and by placing the eye in abduction the patient avoids the position where the superior oblique is maximally required thus the face turn helps by preventing adduction of the affected eye the third component is the chin down posture in the chin down position the eyes move upwards this means the eyes are not in depression which is again the position where the superior oblique is most needed by avoiding down gaze the chin down posture reduces both vertical diplopia and torsional diplopia so to summarize the compensatory head posture in fourth nerve palsy places the eye in a position where there is minimal need for depression minimal need for adduction and minimal need for intorsion in other word it keeps the eye in a position where superior oblique muscle is least required and that is why patients with fourth nerve palsy adopt this characteristic abnormal head posture 
so if you have to remember one important point from this lecture please remember the abnormal head posture in the fourth nerve palsy let us try to understand how can we objectively identify excyclotorsion on fundus examination now there's definitely double maddox rod test which can help us identify the torsion in the eye and also quantify it but we can also find it by doing a simple fundus examination so basically you examine the position of the fovea relative to the optic disc Normally, if you draw a line horizontally from the inferior one third of the disc, that horizontal line intersects the fovea. However, in excyclotorsion, the fovea is displaced inferiorly and temporally and it appears to be lower than normal relative to that horizontal line. You can see here in this diagram. Note the excyclotorsion seen in the right fundus. The yellow dashed line drawn horizontally from the inferior one third of the disc in the left eye, which is the normal eye, intersects the fovea. However, a line drawn in the same manner in the right eye crosses superior to the fovea. As the eye extorts, the fovea is also placed inferior to the line drawn from the inferior one third of the disc. If you have stayed with me till this level, do consider clicking the subscribe button. It genuinely motivates me to create more such detailed concept based videos for you.